Thank you, Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. So for those of you that were here during my icebreaker, I mentioned that one of my primary interests or interests was running. One of the reasons I like running is because I think it's a pretty pure sport. There's not a lot of gear requirements. That you don't need a specific field or a playing field to do it on. And you don't really even need a team or even a competition. All you need is time and a little motivation to get out the door. However, there is one piece of gear that more than any others is integral to the running experience, and that is the shoe. Before I started running, I thought, probably like many people here think, that running shoes were all relatively the same. A running shoe is a running shoe is a running shoe. Go to the store, you find one that you like the way it looks, put it on, it's comfortable, you walk around the store a little bit, no blisters in 30 seconds, all right, we're good. <laughs> Buy it, go out, and run it. And after about several years of running pretty regularly now, I realized that there's actually quite a bit more to it than that. And it's important. The right choice in a running shoe can really enhance the experience and make it more enjoyable. And vice versa, the wrong experience can lead to inefficiency, fatigue, discomfort, or at worst, injury. So I'm going to talk today about running shoes, kind of some of the different properties of them. And then I'm going to talk about my quiver here of running shoes. And I'll talk briefly about each one and why I chose it. So first, to talk about running shoes in general. Um, I'm going to use my, my daily driver here to illustrate some of the key points. This is a boat shoe. This is not a running shoe, by the way. Uh, so a running shoe uh, consists of uh, several key components here. First is the outsole. It's the part of the shoe that contacts the ground. The midsole, which is where most of the cushioning resides. The, the insole is what your foot sits on. And this, everything else on the shoe is considered the upper. The primary purpose of the upper is to hold your foot to the sole of the shoe. The, the, however, there are some, some important parts of the upper that uh, important properties, uh, specifically the fit of the shoe generally comes from the upper. Also the breathability and drainability of the shoe are a function of the upper of the shoe. Another important uh, part of the shoe that is not talked about enough outside running circles is called the heel-toe drop. And that refers to is the difference in height off the ground that your foot is at when standing between the heel and the forefoot. The conventional running shoe has between 8 and 12 millimeters of heel-toe drop, so that means that your heel is 8 to 12 millimeters higher off the ground than your toe. Now this favors a runner who has a prominent heel strike, basically they're hitting the ground first with their heel because that property rolls them forward naturally under the front of the shoe, makes for an easier push off. Low drop shoes create a more natural stride, but they put a little more strain on your ankle muscles and your calf. So if you've never run in a low drop shoe and you go out and do a few miles and the next day you'll probably be pretty sore in your Achilles and your calf. So those are some of the properties of the uh, running shoes I'm going to talk about today. Excuse me for a minute while I put my shoe back on, for Kyle's sake. <laughs> All right, we're good. So, I am going to talk here about, about my quiver of running shoes. Uh, four of the five shoes here, they are from a single company called Ultra. This is not an advertisement for Ultra. I'm not trying to deify Ultra. And it so happens that their, their shoes work well for my foot shape and my particular stride. But there are so many because running shoes have very specific purposes and I run in, in different environments. First, this is the Roadster. This is called the Ultra Solstice. It's relatively new. I've only run it a few times, but I do like it. So I'm going to keep running on it probably this afternoon. Uh, it's a road-specific shoe. Therefore, you can see there's not much traction on the bottom. The outsole mat uh, material is very soft. However, it is pretty stiff. And the key feature of this shoe, particularly, is very lightweight. It's a fast, low-cushion running shoe. Also, I like the orange laces and the orange trim. Pretty cool looking. <laughs> Moving down the line up here, this is called the Ultra One V3. Sorry, it's pretty dirty, but don't worry, I smell checked all these shoes for them. <laughs> <laughs> They're relatively okay. Uh, no problem. So this is, this is marketed as a road shoe. However, I have found that I like it for a different purpose. I call it a hybrid shoe. It's, I use it for a mix of road and trail. So if I'm going out for a run, I'm going to be on pavement for maybe half the time or a third of the time, then I'm going to venture off onto the dirt for a bit. This shoe works very well because it excels, it does okay in both environments. It's firm enough and stiff enough to uh, work well on the trail, but also it's not so rugged that it's, it's rough on your foot when you bring it on pavement. So and it's also very good on fire roads. So this, this is kind of the go-between 
for road and trail. If I'm not sure which one I'm going to end up on, I go with this shoe. Moving into the trail lineup, next shoe is called the Ultra Superior. This is Ultra's uh, low, low cushion, kind of do-it-all trail shoe. I've been running these for a long time, pretty much since I've got back into running. Um, they've, they've, they evolve every year slightly. It's a low, low cushion, low stack height, highly stable, and aggressive tread on the outside. Uh, their only weakness is really their upper durability. As you can see, I've got some holes starting on this one here. Uh, after probably about 40 more miles than these, they'll probably blow out. But these are great shoes for me for anything up to 50 miles. I'm going beyond 50 miles, which I don't do very often, but occasionally I do. I have to, I have to pull out the behemoth, the Ultra <laughs> Lone Peak. As you can see, this is uh, similar to this, but it's got slightly a, a more beefy midsole, slightly more cushioning, and a more ruggedized upper. You can tell these shoes here only have about 150 miles on them, and they're starting to wear through. These ones have about 250 miles on them, and there's no signs of wear. So slightly more rugged, and they're better for longer runs. However, mile for mile, when it comes to pure enjoyment for, of running, I would go back to this. I go back to this next little guy right here. This is the Bedrock Running Sandal. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, it's about seven millimeters of very hard rubber and minimal straps that hold your foot to it. Uh, it's very rough on your feet. Uh, I can only run about probably eight to ten miles right now in them, uh, but those eight to ten miles are awesome. You feel free, light, and it's very enjoyable. So I, if, if I'm going on a shorter run, an hour or less, I tend to default to my Bedrock Sandals. Okay. So to conclude, you guys are probably thinking, okay, so what? Now I know what shoes Brad runs and what does that matter to me? Uh, but hopefully I've demonstrated that there are many running shoes in the genre to choose from. And hopefully this will help you guys make informed decisions if you go out and buy running shoes based on the terrain you plan on running, your stride, and how much shoe you want on your foot. Because ultimately in the end, a good shoe can make running more safer and more enjoyable. Thank you. Mr. Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters, most welcome. Yes, as the evaluator, I will be giving Brad feedback on the Pathways program. And for those of you unfamiliar to it, they have PDFs for the evaluations, and that's what I will be using to structure my evaluation. One of the things that I like about these new ones is that they not only give numerical criteria, but they give rubrics for defining how those criteria should be made, and I will be trying to use that throughout. That'll be the next word of the day, next time I'm word master. <laughs> so I liked how you began by referring back to your icebreaker, connecting one speech to the other. The, one of the main purposes of this speech was to be well organized, and you used the standard, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. So after an introduction, you said what you were going to explain about the shoes, and then you showed us the shoes, and then you, you ended it. And I liked how you ended it with a call to why we should care about what you were talking about. I'm, I'm going to come back to that. Your use of visual aids was exemplary. That wasn't part of this project. But you showed us literally with each shoe and explained with it what, what they were used for and why they were being used. I thought that was very, very well done. It's some future project that actually focuses on that, but you've already mastered that part uh, very well. I liked how you explained why you, why you need all these different shoes. I mean, I, I have five violins, <laughs> and I would be at a loss to explain why I need each of them. I thought your use of gestures was effective when you were using the shoes, and sometimes you were doing some of this. My one suggestion on that is that you're resting place tended to be a little prayer hand, so that's just something to watch out for. Your voice was very pleasing. It projected well, but wasn't overbearing. You had some vocal variety. I would encourage you to use even more vocal variety. You had excellent vocal variety at the beginning. There was a part in the middle where it kind of flattened out, and then towards the end it picked up again. That was excellent. My main suggestions have to do with the audience. Now, if I were a runner, <laughs> then I would be more engaged with this. So my first suggestion is to begin with seeing if there are runners out there, and then seeing if you can connect with them. 
You might say, are, are you a runner? Do you like to run? Or raise your hand if you're a runner. My second suggestion has to do with a little more setup on why there were different kinds of shoes. In other words, you could say, if you run, how many pairs of running shoes do you have? How many do you think you need? Again, just set that up a little bit more. But overall, I liked your use of humor about passing the smell test and, and other things which we associate with shoes. And I very much look forward to hearing a second version of this or a second version of a speech in which you incorporate some of these suggestions. Thank you, Mr. Joseph.